Oh hi, I'm the heretic. This video is a request by one of my patrons. I can't thank you enough to all of you who support my channel and it really means a lot to me and for the cause of liberty. If you want to become a patron, just click the link in the description and donate to me on Patreon. Now, indoctrination. What does it mean? How does it work? How does one become indoctrinated? Could you be indoctrinated? Could I be indoctrinated? We'll explore this topic and more. But before we start, let's define our terms. So what is indoctrination? Indoctrination is the process in which a person is inculcated into a certain idea or perspective, typically done through repeated exposure to the idea in question in the absence of other ideas that might be contrary or even critical to the original idea. What happens is that the indoctrinated are insulated from these competing ideas or if they are mentioned, the well is so poisoned that they can't possibly critically examine these ideas. After all, if they are definitely wrong, then what value is there in examining them? The whole point is to make ideas that are being indoctrinated seem immune to criticism by deflecting away criticism. If someone critically thinks about the ideas presented to them, they may notice inconsistencies, hypocrisy in its leaders, and other failings in the idea that cast doubt on its legitimacy. If the indoctrinated express these doubts openly, then they are set upon, derided and humiliated for questioning accepted orthodoxy. For an indoctrinated person who lives in a community of true believers, this is definitely the case, and this kind of social ostracism is absolutely terrifying. We're social animals, you know. Humans are too, I think. We crave interaction with others, and if the love, respect, and attention of your friends and family is dependent on your conformity, well, that's a lot of power to have over another person. This is doubly so for hatchlings. It takes a decade and a half, give or take, for a newborn to become mature enough that they could conceivably become financially independent from their parents. So parental abandonment for a 20-year-old isn't the end of the world. But for an 8-year-old, the parental bond isn't just an emotional bedrock for the child's mental stability, but an umbilical cord. Without it, the child's as good as dead. We're evolved to experience death anxiety without someone raising us when we're younger. While hatchlings aren't consciously aware of this, they feel it. So the urge to conform to whatever self-evidently nonsensical ideology is very strong. Anything to make sure that they maintain that safety and love. Their minds, with the encouragement of the indoctrinators, will rationalize away their doubts at some faults or deficits on their part. Indoctrinators will use Pavlovian conditioning to cause the indoctrinated to associate doubt with death anxiety, so that not only do they police their own thoughts, but those of everyone around them, if only to avoid having that death anxiety provoked by the doubts of others. With the indoctrinated becoming the indoctrinators, policing their peers for deviancy, we've come full circle. The indoctrinated is thoroughly programmed into the orthodoxy and regards opposing ideas with the same virulent hatred that one might regard a child molester. Though indoctrination is typically associated with the religion, it isn't exclusive to it. Governments indoctrinate their people through government schooling systems. Cultures assimilate their young into the tastes, manners, and values of the local regions. People can be indoctrinated into brand loyalty. The point is, any idea, for any purpose anyone could possibly conceive of, someone can be indoctrinated into it. You, watching this video, might have some views you've been indoctrinated into and not even know it. So it's important to ask yourself some questions. Think about what you believe, what you know to be true. How you know it's true, as opposed to alternative ideas. Can you refute competing ideas with logical, rational arguments instead of emotional or subjective appeals? How were you exposed to these ideas in the first place? How do the people around you treat dissenting ideas and those who hold them? How are you treated if you dissent? You will know you were not indoctrinated if opposing views were presented openly, if proof for its validity exists in a logical framework outside of itself, 
In other words, it doesn't rely on circular reasoning for validation. By using this framework, you can objectively judge opposing ideas as well without having to rely on emotional appeals. A good example is anti-slavery. I know slavery is wrong, not because I was told so in government schools, but because I can prove it objectively, since slavery is inconsistent with self-ownership, as it creates an arbitrary distinction between slaves and non-slaves, as to which category of moral agents is able to own themselves. Because it's inconsistent and arbitrary, it's invalid. You know you aren't indoctrinated if you can explore opposing viewpoints with curiosity and openness rather than hostility. Now those who indoctrinate have all sorts of justifications for their actions. They might say that their beliefs are the truth, but if that were the case, then keeping indoctrinated away from opposing ideas makes no sense. After all, the truth requires no censor. Maybe these beliefs were in the indoctrinated's best interests. In the case of religion, to save their soul, for political philosophies, to save the town, region, or the world. Regardless, the same standard applies. If believing is in people's best interest, then there has to be a way to prove that. Even if the belief is 100% accurate, that it being in the believer's interests is provable. Dissent should be welcomed, if only as an opportunity to enlighten an unbeliever to the truth. Is it the best way to teach people? No. No, it is demonstrably not. Any method of education that relies on the emotional abuse of children is an educational system that sucks. Any form of instruction that relies on emotional abuse or force sucks. Indoctrination does go on today. You can probably think of several examples yourself. I could explore examples of indoctrination, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Maybe at a later time. But for the time being, just take a moment and think about what's already mentioned and where you've heard or seen some of this in your own life. Questions? Comments? Critique? Psychology is not a topic I usually talk about, so how do you think I did? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon if you have any videos you'd like me to do. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.